Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to uh, our devotional time together, and welcome all remnants who have left to share the love of God and share the experiences that we had. Um, did you all, guys all enjoy keep up? Yeah, it was good. We're all. Yeah. It's on Psalms chapter 133, verse 1. None of you will know this. Uh -huh. See how good and how pleasing it is for brothers and sisters to be living together in harmony. That was what I was thinking when I was in this office. Since all of us, we were all uh, volunteered to uh, be together and praise the name of the Lord and share the gospel. Not for any uh, profits or not. Thank you. Oh. Oh, oh, like this? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, well, but only for one purpose to praise the name of the Lord. And so I was really thankful when I was attending this conference also, and maybe all of you would have. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to share our testimonies with each other of the experiences that we had at the outreach. And we're going to get into groups of about three. Three. There's not many left, but we can maybe get into groups of three. And we can share the love that we experienced and maybe share the special experience that we never had before at the place and what God has worked for us amazingly at the place. So, and after about 20 minutes, we're going to get together and then we're going to, uh, from each group, at least one person will volunteer to come up and share their testimony together. So we'll all be blessed. Okay, so right now it's uh, 6.48, so until 7.10, we're going to share in our groups. Or if you, if, you, if you didn't go to the outreach with us together, you can just share about the love of God or you can share you can join the group who went to the outreach so we can all be blessed. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let's get into groups and share our testimonies. Maybe we can, we can start from <laughs> this guy. <laughs> 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 you, you can hand the mic to the uh, Good afternoon once again. My name is Jay Israel, and I'm from the Philippines. Uh, I'll be sharing to you my experience with this outreach program this afternoon. Actually, we've been doing this for, uh, we've, we've been doing this in the Filipino church. It's, it's kind of a regular, uh, program of the church, but uh, back in the Philippines, when we do outreach program, we give this reading materials to Filipino people, and then when you, when we look at them, we look at their eyes, they smile, and then they respond. We can understand understand each other. But one thing here in Korea is it's different because we do not know the culture in Korea. We do not know that 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 much. So when you give something, they kind of say something in Korean. <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. And then, I don't understand it. Whether it's good or bad or whatever, I'm not affected. But uh, what, um, what I have in mind is I'm bringing the Word of God. And then, the good feeling I have, thank you, the good feeling I have today is when I, when I, uh, when I give to uh, some people, to a group of people, for example, in a subway station, uh, when uh, a group of people... I really feel guilty when I don't offer this reading material to everybody. Like, uh, I cannot offer to everyone because they come in group. So, uh, what I have in mind is, what if those two guys are the ones who need this? 
So I have to run after them and then hope <laughs> reading material. Do you speak? Uh, my first strategy was, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> my first strategy was to speak English like, hey, brother, do you speak English? And then uh, they, they don't speak any, any word. So I changed my strategy. What if I say uh, something in Korean? So I ask somebody, can you translate this line in Korean? I'm bringing health message. And then uh, she responded, and uh, she's, she's American, and then she does not know Korean that much. So she said, Konggang he. So I was thinking I'm bringing the uh, health message, but when I ask somebody, when I ask somebody here, Johnny, the meaning is health, what? what? Healthy. healthy. So on the street, I was saying healthy, <laughs> healthy, <laughs> healthy. But I had the spirit. Uh, I had the spirit, but I really love doing this thing because I feel like uh, uh, after the, the outreach program, I feel empowered, I feel blessed because in doing this program, we're not just bringing the message to other people, we're not just empowering them, we're, we're also blessed because we, became, we become channel of this, of this spreading evangelism. And then another thing is in Korea, uh, as a Filipino, I, heard, I hear that uh, there is a connotation about SDA here. It's a cult or uh, something different. And then, are you a Christian? Why you don't go to, why you don't uh, uh, praise God on Sundays? And then most of the, the people who, who can speak English, they ask, are you a member of any church? And then uh, uh, I was kind of battling which one to answer, yes or no. If I say no, I'm kind of uh, refusing that I'm a Christian. When I say yes, the next question is, which group? SDA. The cult one? Uh, no, I will not accept that. So I, I, I decided to say no. But in my mind, I'm sorry, God. I'm really sorry. I'm bringing your message, but I have to do this. So I said no, and then uh, I, I continued saying healthy, healthy. Because <laughs> I, uh, one good thing is, one good thing is in, in the pamphlets that we uh, we distributed we distributed eight eight small uh, reading materials pamphlet pamphlets and then three or four of, of those are new start exercise thing uh, juicing uh, water reading etc so what I did I got the the most interesting and health health related stuff there in front the one with juicer with juice tomato so I continued healthy lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, and they accepted. And another experience is most of the people who received the reading materials are uh, elderly ones, the grandparents, the, the weak ones. So I targeted them, but I actually, I really tried the young ones, but they refused. And in, in that area, the people are kind of elite, they're educated, they can speak English, and then some of them, they really ask from you, uh, can, I, can I have two? So I give, but uh, in my mind, uh, I just focused on the fact that I'm bringing Jesus, I'm bringing love here. So they, they refuse or whatever, they murmur in Korean or something or whatever. In my mind, it's Jesus, Jesus, the love of Jesus. Uh, hello guys, uh, it has been a very uh, spiritual uh, experience for me, personally, I think for everyone here too. Uh, for me, uh, I was just point to point, that's really impressed me very much. I met a guy from, uh, I mean, oh, from our team too, so you know, I met a guy from uh, Canada, and he, just get, he arrived in Korea two, two days ago, and he's a Jew, you know, yeah, he's a Jew, and you know, we talked, and and so I was very curious because I had to just start from somewhere, right? So I started with the religion, you know, uh, what, what kind of customer do you practice back home? Like, but he told me one thing really s impressed me very much. He, he said uh, his religion to him, it was more of a tradition than a religion. So, you know, so I've been living in this community for, my, for about six years. So I started to think about my friends in the, in this uh, uh, community, so I kind of feel some kind of danger too, 
what was it, this religion and became a tradition to you or what they stand for faith? So I want to, uh, it was a reminder for me, I think for everyone, uh, everyone here too, to stand firm first uh, to our faith. And then uh, you hand out, you know what message you're, ha you're handing out to the people. Mm. Uh, so you have, to, you have to be sure first what you have in your hand mm. and then you'll be able to convey every word that came out of your mouth. So that's one thing. And there's one more thing is the, uh, uh, how we uh, go out to approach. It's not about the water, the, the you know, the, the yeah, the tissue that we give people, but, uh, but you know, but there's a strategy we have to use. But uh, when we come to deal with the, the uh, real uh, relation with the people outside of our community, uh, it's, it's really difficult. Uh, for me personally, you know, you, if, if you do not work in this environment, you're working outside, working with, let's see, the outsider, you know, and how you gonna approach to them being yourself and and also you know and can try to bring this uh, good good news to them. Uh, where where's the point you can start with? I think the first thing is not but it's it's not about to bring what we know. It first to get to 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 know them first, because if we put our thing first, and then you are ignoring uh, the people who who are talking to whatever they have whatever they have. So and also in this society, it's very sensitive about this topic. So you do not have the basics to start a conversation uh, even. So I think it's really important to, uh, so I also met two kids from, uh, from uh, uh, they're, they're about 10 years ago, one 14, one 15, they're kids. So I, I had a, about almost 20 minutes talking with him, actually them sitting down there. They're, they're ca Catholic. But you know it's also passed down from parents, so they don't know what they're doing. You know they just um, listen to their parents everything. Uh, so 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 what so what you know what I uh, felt from from the conversation is that when we got to talk to the you know the, the people, try to know their their belief first, and then if if there is a possibility that let's become friends, and then we can share our ideas from that exchange equal on an equal basis, and then hope for the message might bring some uh, 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 change in them. And I think that's God's work. Uh, we, cannot can we cannot force. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> yeah. Somebody else? There's another team back there. <laughs> That was back there too, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> I guess I better not sing then, huh? <laughs> All right. Um, well, uh, the event was actually pretty good. I wasn't expecting to go <laughs> at first. I was really tired. I didn't get much sleep, so I wanted to just rest. But the, the, the uh, what is it, Richard Sabuin? His talk really started warming my heart. And the, the point of, of uh, can you only find one person out there? It started to, to kind of burn on me. I thought, he's talking to me. Everybody in this room knows he's talking to me, so I said, okay, well, <laughs> you all knew that, right? He's talking to me. All right, so I said, okay, I'm going to head out there, and I just jumped in the car and followed this guy. <laughs> that, that was really hard. <laughs> he was trying to lose me, I think. Anyway, so we got there. You guys were late. <laughs> yeah, I was late. So we got there, and we had a great time divvying up all the supplies. We went to meet uh, Tombi, and she disappeared. <laughs> we got there, she's like, great, I'm gonna go down here, and we didn't see her again. <laughs> she left her water bottle. So we uh, grabbed some books, I had a stack here, and I was piling up the water. I would hand it to people, and I knew the word mool 
for water. So I, and I thought, well, how do I say, do you want some water? Juseo, okay. Mul, oh, deseo, right? Mul deseo. And someone said, oh, that's, that's irrespect, that's not respectful. So, mul deseo, right? Mul deseo, deseo. So I, I was practicing that, you know, twisting my tongue, and I got it. Mul deseo. And these people felt so sorry for me, they took the water anyway <laughs> with the book. <laughs> we poor thing here, I'll take that. So, so that was fun. Um, and then I went back for some more water. I'm gathering it up, and people like water, apparently, because when I turned around, there's like a crowd of people around me. They're like, water? Move? <laughs> Here's a book, and you know, so that was great. And um, then I realized that I'm standing next to a person, so when they got water, they reached over and they got tissue, too. I thought, maybe we shouldn't stand so close to each other. <laughs> They're like, this is great, man, tissue and water. So I said, maybe you should just stay a little further away. Um, so that, that worked out, you know, we, pretty soon I was reaching out to give people water and they already had a book in their hand, so that was great. Um, and uh, after a while, we ran out of water. And after a while, we ran out of paper. And so we just had books. We had a whole box full of books we hadn't opened. I thought, wow, great, we've got a, a box <laughs> they had in the, in the, the do you container, right? So the, the sum you do you. So I, I'm like, oh, soy milk. Oh, more books. <laughs> 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 <We're>, no water. <laughs> so we grab some more books. And uh, I'm thinking, how do we give the books away with, noth with no gimmick, right? <laughs> so No gift. <laughs> so I thought, well, the book is a gift. So how do we give the book away? And I thought, you know, sh she had a good idea. <laughs> Sunmul, gift. <laughs> that was smart. I should have I should have said that. Uh, so I was like, "Book, you want one?" And people were looking at it, going, "Okay, what is this?" So I had to think real fast, and um, I asked uh, one of the ladies, Koreans. She said, uh "Oh, what, what did she say?" Um, just say "Annyeong haseyo." <laughs> I'm like, "I know what that means. It means like hello." <laughs> so apparently, it worked for a while. So I was like, "Hello, hello, annyeong haseyo, annyeong haseyo." And they'd take the book, so that was nice, big smile. And I thought, I want to say more, so what can I say? And so then, what is it? Uh, who is it? I think you, no, was, was it you? No, who is it? The guy with the big smile. Oh, what's his name? Is it Johnny? Johnny. Where's Johnny? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Johnny is a great guy. Big smile, great communicator. And uh, he's, he's been a coal porter for I don't know how many years. So he, he goes and says, uh, why don't you just say, like, a uh, good book, uh, read it. So it's like, chao cheku il boseo, or something like that. <laughs> and so I had to say that. <laughs> That's long. <laughs> Keep saying, cheku il boseo. And... <laughs> Oh, child, 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 chickle, and they're like in the uh, subway already. So, <laughs> and this poor lady standing here watching me, like, here, just give me the book. <laughs> Thank you, come samida, you know. Oh, so we got rid of all our books. It was great, and I felt like, like uh, I felt like I was part culprit all of a sudden. So, um, I was more touched. Not that I felt an angel beside me, but I felt like uh, here's a guy who is really has done this a lot, and he and you could tell that being a coal porter changes you. Yes. Giving out books changes you. Mm -hmm. Having Christ walk with you door to door or wherever he does it changes you. Mm -hmm. And I saw him in a new light, and I saw coal porters in a new light because I'm like I think. You have to be, I thought you have to be a certain kind of person to be a cold porter, but as a result of meeting him, I realized you have to want to be a cold porter, <laughs> and that changes you. And so I watched him for a little bit, and I said, this guy knows what he's doing, because he stood out there, big smile. It's as, as though the, wherever he stepped, that was his territory, and that shun. Out, it radiated out from him, like the Holy Spirit was just radiating out. And as he stood there, he was like this, you know, almost like a pastor, you know, he had his book and he's like, here you go, 
you know. And uh, I don't know what he said in Hangul, but the people actually gathered around him, and he started having a conversation with them, explaining the book to them. I was like, how did he do that? <laughs> oh, he was speaking Korean. It's canvassing. It's canvassing, exactly. He knew exactly what the book was about, so he was able to share it, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, oh, really? And you see the, the elderly gentleman reading it and looking at it. Oh, wow. So they're walking away slowly. <laughs> Just like, how does he do that? That's amazing. I guess I, guess I have to learn Korean really well. <laughs> My wife will like that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> hi, honey. <laughs> She's watching. So, um, that was my my experience out there. Uh, it wasn't. I I wish it would have been about one-on-one -on -one communication or a Bible study or something with people. But each line of ministry has its own uh, perks and its own um, areas. So that was that was my experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, this is a report for today. We had distributed 600 books, um, 200 waters, 330 tissues. <laughs> How many health tracks from field stack do you remember? 200 more. 200 more packages, right? Packing. And you had 50 flowers. Yeah. Flowers mostly given in in the bus, right? <laughs> Already ran out when they arrived. We had 44 people, for not including the field staff who came later, but the, the three teams worked one hour, 10 minutes. Originally, my plan was to distribute 1,200 books. <laughs> but we did 600 books in one hour today, so we next time we would know how many books <laughs> we should aim. Um, and um, yes, next week, we'll do it again. Amen? Amen. Uh, any youth, youth com uh, conference we go, people say outreach. Sabbath outreach is the climax and highlight. Mm -hmm. People don't know unless they participate in it. Because some people are afraid and they run away mm -hmm. and they have lay ministry. <laughs> lay ministry. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, some other talking ministries, yeah. right? But unless you are part of it, you, you don't get to experience this excitement, right? Mm -hmm. Today I, I heard very encouraging uh, testimonies like, as you go out, you, you feel the need of like changing myself. And you, it's a good stimulation for our spiritual life, actually. So um, I'm glad to hear those uh, testimonies. It's one thing uh, I want to uh, emphasize before announcing for next week. Um, there's a one Bible text corporals really l love to recite every time. Do you know what it is? Which one? Catch your breath, open the world. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, Ecclesiastes. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. In due season you shall reap. You, you don't have to be tired of doing good because God will make you reap in due time, right? Uh, just one quick testimony of mine. This was, was back in a few years back. I was in an um, evangelism training school called Amazing Facts Center of Evangelism. For six months, we have to work 10 hours a week, 10 hours of canvassing every um, during six weeks of, uh, I mean, six months of training, I got numerous uh, Bible study contacts. About 60, well, no, not percentage, but most of uh, Bible study contacts I got was the last house that I locked on. It's the last house, the very last person you reach. Do, do you experience those things, canvassers? Right? Always it's the, the last house. The last house at the corner, sun is already set, people are cooking already, you can smell the food. You are too sorry to knock on their doors because they will be angry. But you say, oh, before we go, just last house. And that's the house that opens up and accepts Jesus Christ. So what I'm trying to say is, um, and, and there was one more time. Um, before I come here, I was in Ilsan English Church. Uh, 
one day I distributed books myself, and uh, it was Tuesday, so I was on my way to Tuesday prayer meeting, and uh, on the way I distributed some tracts and books. Uh, I didn't have enough time to eat something before I go to the meeting, but before I crossed the road for my church, it's a street vendors, right? Street vendors, Korean people have. They, they were selling egg bread. Fish bread in Korea doesn't have fish, right? <laughs> but egg bread actually have egg inside. So it's uh, egg bread. Um, when I reached my pocket to pay him, I discovered I had one glow tracks in my pocket. So I decided to give him. Sir, thank you for it. And I paid my money and this is a really good material I want you to read. And he was like, oh, thank you. Which church do you go to? And I said, just that Adventist just crossed the road. And the street bander is, uh, is covered up, right? You, you just see face. And behind the, the thing, lady popped up, <laughs> his wife. And then both of them said, we were Adventists before. <laughs> I mean, she was the Adventist before, right? She was living in Huegi. And she was, uh, she didn't have any contact, but since she was living close to Adventist Hospital Church, uh, she used to attend there when she, before she got married. But when she got married to this husband, uh, their family went to Sunday Church, so she just followed the, the rest of the family to Sunday Church. And what is what's shocking was that uh, this guy was saying, they, they really appreciated, like, oh, I... The husband said, um, when she was still going to Adventist church, we used to receive a lot of good health magazines there. We don't get to have it anymore. <laughs> so I said, no problem. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah. and, and husband turned to his wife and said, honey, since we, we were not going to church for a long time now, so before they were Adventist and Presbyterian, but both of them quit church. And he said, maybe it's time to go back to Adventist church. <laughs> he said that in front of us. And then, so every time I go to church, every, every time we get the new home and health magazines, I deliver to them and they really liked it. So it is the, always the last one. <laughs> People who last until the end will get to see the joy of things. Uh, this simple, was it too hard today? Was it too painful? <laughs> Although after that we couldn't walk to the lake, we were not too tired to death, right? So we could do more maybe next week. And since you are convinced today, you can invite more people next week. Um, but since we have next week, which is the last meeting and last chance, let us be faithful until the end. And look at this uh, place today. We've been having Chedim every year, but it seems like we're decreasing <laughs> little by little. But there's something God always prepared for the people who endures till the end. That's what I believe. So next week, there's another opportunity. Uh, we're going to Sakya Station. The, the things will be same, but Sakya Station is more like... Um, Actually, quite, I was quite surprised no one has that many, many population today. Uh, it took us almost an hour and a half in Itaewon to finish up 600 books, 600 items, I'd say. Uh, but today, one hour, almost one hour and a half, same. I mean, it was going fast. Sokke is um, similar, but it's more like condensed. So, announcement next week. Um, if you have instruments and if you can sing, please bring those things. You can sing there. Sake is a good place to sing uh, because uh, it's a concentration and people come into the narrow part. So you can sing there. Um, time is same, 2 p.m., same procedure. <laughs> it's closer, so it's easier to get. And uh, we'll see what God does and uh, we'll endure till the end. So thank you so much. Can we finish? Okay, let's pray yeah, to finish. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for once again revealing your power. Um, and working in our hearts. Um, the greatest miracle is a change of heart, and you have brought that change in our hearts today. And thank you for the messages uh, that touched our hearts. Lord, we want to be changed. We want to be better in approaching people, and we want to be better in presenting uh, your love and your message to people. Um, let this opportunity let this be an opportunity for us to uh, walk close, closely uh, to you and a um, chance to um, experience your transforming power. Um, in this room, we have not too many people. Um, some are sick and some are bereaved. And um, I want to lift them in prayer that you will com give comfort to them and you'll give them healing. Um, and also tomorrow we'll come back here for uh, a seminar. Uh, please add your more blessings to us. And if anybody is struggling in heart um, or trying to make decisions for you, Lord, um, please speak to them in their heart that they may come and listen to the messages that you have prepared for them. And once again, thank you for the the love you have given us among us that we can um, be friend and you can have fellowship let this be continued until you come back and we go to heaven together in jesus name i pray amen do i have to carry both of them good evening everyone um i know a lot of you a lot of the people here because we go to church together and I've met a lot of new friends today and I've met some of them before. I just want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. Um, my husband has been preparing this for a year. Like right after the last conference ended, he's been preparing this. And so we just want to thank you for your presence here today. And as you all know that um, there are uh, financial needs of this conference. Uh, originally, my husband's goal was to be able to fund this conference by people's registration fees. Um, of course, I would love for this conference to be free. I mean, <laughs> totally. But um, you know, renting this r venue, where he's actually trying to figure things out to lower the cost right now um, to see what we should do. Um, but anyway, if you guys feel the burden to give. I know a lot of you have already donated. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Your reward is in heaven. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're very thankful, you know, like we, we didn't do this conference just to get money from people, but truly he just wants to bless people. Yeah. So, thank you. Oh, wait, invite your friends for next weekend. Okay. Um, <laughs> good question. He's, huh? What rooms are we using? Originally, we had planned this room, uh, 101 and 103 for three of the seminars. Um, but due to the lack of attendees, we're not 100% sure what we're going to do right now. We will message everyone. Um, we're thinking, Jaywa is thinking maybe just using one room and have the speakers just do one hour each and rotate like that. So for the first meeting tomorrow is going to be here? Yeah, first meeting will be here. First seminar will be here. Second seminar will be here. I think he's going to do, instead of an hour and a half, he's going to do one hour, one hour, one hour for each speaker. Okay. Yeah, so please invite your friends if, yeah, you know, if they have time tomorrow. And also remind them for next weekend. Oh, they're online? Tell the, tell the people online. Oh, tell yes. Online. If you guys are here in this area next weekend, please come and join us and be blessed. Um, I know in the days of Moses and David, you know, they were just ac accepting free will offerings from them to be able to build the sanctuary for the Lord. Amen. And so this is not the sanctuary for the Lord, but we know that this is a conference that God wanted to share through all of us. And so you guys have the opportunity to move this conference forward. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
See you guys tomorrow, guys.